Livingstone Bramble is an old friend of ESPN Boxing. We've seen the ups and downs of this 33-year-old veteran. One of the ups came with a win over Roger Brown. And it looked like he might upset young Phenom Obakar. But the quick start faded. And Oba came back in a remarkable fifth round. Livingstone showed his toughness and hung in, but lost the disputed decision. And the losses kept coming. For instance, there was another close one to Ricky Myers. And then there was a blowout when he faced Roger Mayweather. 1994 is his last year in boxing, he says. He'd like it to be a good one starting tonight against 27-year-old Mike Johnson, for whom the key word is change. He's changed trainers and he hopes his style too. It was the plotting off-balance style that allowed Roger Mayweather to win a decision against him. He believes an improved right hand will help him win shootouts, like this one against Vince Phillips. He lost this one, but he's on a five-fight win streak. Livingstone Bramble, nothing if not unique. Doesn't work out in boxing, he can always be a hockey goalie. <laughs> he's, he's a character, fun guy, and you can see why. He really is a lovely guy. Livingstone Bramble has gotten some strange ink over the course of time, and I'll tell you what, he's a pretty astute guy, he's very bright, he knows exactly what he's doing, and the bottom line is, he's a good guy. So too is Mike Johnson. Johnson very serious about his business these days. He spent a good portion of his career just learning how to fight, now he says he's ready. Al, let's talk about the AutoZone keys to victory. Well, for Bramble, a blast from the past. He's got to get back to his previous form. Later is greater. He'll want to get Johnson in the later rounds where he can do better work. I think he's got to get through the early part. Johnson's been working on staying on balance. He, he, he's been off balance on. When I say right to the attack, he's improved his right hand a lot. He's got to use it and use it early. All right, let's talk about the rules here in the state of Pennsylvania, although sometimes here at Fernwood, I question whether there are any. Yeah, sometimes they don't follow them, but three knockdown rule in effect. They standing eight count, doc to top the bottom, when it gets 10, loser 9 or less. The referee doesn't figure in the scoring, and you can be saved by the bell only in the last round. I really think this is going to be a good fight. We'll find out. Let's get to it now with Michael Buffett. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, and welcome to the Fernwood Resort and Country Club here in Bushkill, Pennsylvania, where tonight it's top rank boxing on ESPN. Brought to you by the undisputed, undefeated king of beers, Bud Weiser, proud to be your bud. All the bouts today are sanctioned by the Pennsylvania State Athletic Committee. Let's get things started, ladies and gentlemen, with a 10-round bout. This is in the junior middleweight division, where the bell rings the man in charge of the action, referee Joe Salci. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks with gold letters, weighing 143 and three-quarter pounds. He's from Ann Arbor, Michigan, and brings a professional record of 30 victories with only five defeats, two draws, and 18 KOs to his credit. Presenting Mean Mike Johnson. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing the multicolored trunks with black waistband. Weighing 146 and three quarter pounds. Fighting out of St. Croix, Virgin Islands. His professional record, 35 victories. 12 defeats with three draws. 23 of his 35 victories by KO. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the former lightweight champion of the world. The Rastaman Livingston Rastai Rambo. Gentlemen, I explained you, give the instruction in the dressing room. Do you have any question? Shake hands, come up, back at the bell. So we are set to go as you look at Mike Johnson, and Mike really got his career kick-started. He got with Keith Lee about a year ago, and Keith said, this is the guy who had all the skills, was whacking people out, but for all intent, really didn't know how to box. Now Mike says, I know exactly what I'm doing, and I'm not going to stop here. As to Livingstone Bramble, he says this is his last year of boxing, no matter what happens. He says even if he wins a championship, which he desperately wants, he will not even defend the title. He will just retire. But he'd like to go out in the blaze of glory. Well, and he is, Livingstone Bramble is one of those guys who has had so many ups and downs in boxing. A former champion, uh, he's had good fights, bad fights, dreadful performances, excellent performances. It's just been up and down totally for him. 
said he's in the best shape of his life, at least in the last four or five years for this fight. And you know what he looks at? Yeah, he does. He looks absolutely fit. Very popular figure here in these parts. He actually trained a couple of fighters who we saw on cards previously here in Bushkill. You know, the only thing is, uh, if some kids come in here with a stick, they could uh, just take him for a pinata. I'd hate to see them in here. It's really hurt. It's... He's always been colorfully clad. Yes, this is true. Mike Johnson, you see him getting off to uh, what is for him a game start. This is the right hand he was using. When he was uh, really creating a lot of stir with, with knockouts over the likes of Engels, Pedroza, beating Robert Guy, knocking out Vincent Rutherford, he was considered a real slugger. But as you said, he was working on the boxing skill. Yeah, I thought the way he described it was just about right. He said, now I'm not just aggressive, I'm effectively aggressive. And he used to come rushing in and throw a lot of wide looping punch, especially the left hook. When we saw him against Roger Mayweather, it didn't stand him in good stick because Mayweather was able to effectively box him the entire time. Of year. Bramble also fighting a little bit, not cautiously, but respectfully if you're going in this first round. Bramble used to be just one of the best defensive fighters in boxing. I and mean, he just couldn't hit him if he didn't want you to hit him. Uh, those skills have eroded some in the last couple of years. Bramble is a very bright guy. He is really the antithesis of the image that was created for him back in the days when he was beating everybody. And when he was fighting Ray Mancini, right. he fought for the title. It was this image of this evil kind of Rastafarian character who is after everybody, which is not at all him. No, in fact, he's a you know, father of the year type guy, a very bright guy. And himself a salesman said if i'm not fighting i'll, I'll sell snakes I'll, <laughs> or even snake oil for that matter in this first round it's been kind of a mixed bag for both fighters very tough round to judge this first round and uh, we talk about effective aggression and uh, really neither man had it in this first round you know when Mike Johnson preparing to come to the center of the ring to meet Livingstone Bramble. Bramble 35, 12, and 3. Johnson 35 and 2. Now there's the hook of Johnson, and uh, while he's he developing his right hand is better, remember uh, Mike Johnson has a very powerful left hook. And there you saw it to the body. Numbers in the first round, a slight edge to Bramble. I don't think there's much that could happen in there. The Livingston Bramble has not seen it one time or another. He has, and he's been in with virtually every style of fighter you could possibly imagine. Starting with the Rayman scene to a Tyron Crawley, Edward Rosario, Freddie Pendleton, Edwin Correct, Santos Cardona, Tony Martin. I mean, the list, Carl Grimm with Overcard, the list, the list goes on. Rodney Moore, Ep, on every good junior welterweight, the welterweight you can name, he's flung. Fights against Mancini, your wars. Oh. They, they were they were spectacular fights. I, you did the one in Reno, I did the one in Buffalo. And uh, really special fights for both men. He's using his jab. Both men are using their jab pretty effectively to set up other punches and as a weapon by itself. Nice jab by Mike Jackson. Mike Johnson is very effective also when he's facing a stationary target, which Bramble has pretty much been. And that too is rather uncharacteristic of Bramble, Bramble of old at least. He used to move very well side to side. Just, just enough angles, not running around them, but just enough to give you angles. He doesn't give you the angles he used to. See, can't you bury how conscious Mike Johnson is of staying on balance of not getting wild with his punches? Right hand, I'm going to go by Bram. Bram likes to be a fighter who are at the point in his same point in their career that he is, just wanting that one more chance. 
technique came to that. And that is something he's working. Good body shots by Mike Johnson as well. He's working the body. And of course, he knows he's facing a 33-year-old boxer who's been through a lot of wars, and that body work could help him. There's also a little clash of heads there a moment ago. That's real danger when both these men are fighting, because they square up to one another, and they both back in. You know, from a fan standpoint, when two guys are right in front of each other, both throwing good comp good punches, occasional combinations, and all power punches, it cannot help but be an interesting ball. Slap with that right hand a little bit. You know what's been an effective weapon for both men is the uppercut, especially for Graham and Johnson from time to time, too. There it is for Graham. It works out in the same gym as James Tony. And if you come in there, you better be serious because he sets the tone in that gym. Tony is a no nonsense guy. Years ago, Rambo remembers he was supposed to fight Mike Johnson, and something happened to get it canceled. They're both different now. Yeah, been a lot busier though this round, and it's probably maybe one thing that's because we've been. hand by Brown. Nice counter punch over jab by Johnson. Livingstone is doing a better defensive job but he just got down with a big uppercut. It's the punch you sent. Much better round to Mike Johnson. Infinitely better. Most of the punch missing by Brown. Decided edge in round number four for Mike Johnson of Ann Arbor, Michigan. We'll be back with more. Well, Mike Johnson was able to land this uppercut off the ropes against uh, Livingstone Bramble. It's a punch he's used in Bramble as well. Take a look at the jabs through the first four rounds. Johnson working his jab more, but Bramble getting him with his more. That's really important. It's interesting. Johnson is using his more as a range finder. That's part of the reason why he's not landing as much. Now, there's one that landed by Johnson. So Mike hopes to punch both of gets his credit for that one. He's going to get cheated. <laughs> Neither man, though, relying on that jab is a huge major weapon because they're able to walk in pretty much anyway. Yeah, it's the kind of fight where I don't believe jabs is really an important statistic in this fight. No, they're both there. As soon as we said that, they both landed about six jabs, right? Naturally. But it is true, they can pretty much get in the inside throw if they want. Good counter right by Bramble and good body work. This is this is as sharp as Bramble has looked in the last five or six fights we've seen him. Somebody's mouthpiece just went. Starting to look like a conditioning fight. Like who is in the best shape to win this fight? Yeah. That wasn't the mouthpiece, it was one of those cords from Bramble's trunks. And a reminder that's still to come our main event, James Tony, super middleweight champion, and Anthony Hembrick, a non-title fight in the light heavyweight division. Well, Mike Johnson was quite candid with us today. He didn't think Bramble was over the hill. He didn't think it was an easy fight. And he felt Bramble was really ready for his fight, and he was right. It's been a very close fifth round. There's been a lot of close rounds in this fight. In fact, Johnson's round, the last round, I thought was the most lopsided in the fight. Yeah, see an excellent uh, fourth round. Bramble playing with him a little bit as he used to be wont to do. And Johnson did the right thing by going to the body. Good counter right hand from Bramble. I think that got Johnson's attention. Slap to the left though. Double right hand, Johnson's in trouble. Toward the ends of these rounds, he's looking strong and has stolen probably a couple of the Well, he had Johnson hurt, but Johnson recouped quickly. That was a little low. And Joe Salsi's going to say keep him up. 
Saucy quick to pull the trigger and take a point away. Did not do it there, however. Headed for the end of round number five. Another close round, but again, I'd give the edge to Livingston Bradley. We'll be back. Resort in Bushkill, Pennsylvania. We're watching boxing with tomorrow night. Bud Light presents Big Monday. Trip. Look at the right hand from Livingstone Bramble that uh, cuffed the side of the head of Mike Johnson. It was a very big round for Bramble. There's the hook following it. And uh, Bramble had what certainly was his best round of the fight. And in fact, uh, Bramble uh, landed 60% of his power shots in round five. And to further get Johnson trouble, comes out as a lefty in this one. That has been very effective for him. Well, as we said earlier, I mean, there's nothing that can happen in here that Livingston Bramble has not seen at one point or another. And that's not to say that Mike Johnson is inexperienced, because he too has been around a little bit, but not nearly as much as the man in the candy striped shorts. And Johnson has put together a five-fight win streak, but not against this kind of competition. This is his first bigger fight since he got with Keith Lee and has made what you'd call a mini comeback. And Bramble going the other way, as we started to say, lost to Rodney Moore, lost to Roger Mayweather, got a draw with Daryl Tyson. Then went down to Australia and fought a guy by the name of Constantine Suzu. And he said they had him cut up and bleeding and lost the decision. Then back in October, he fought a guy by the name of Alan Osborne right down the road in Allentown, Pennsylvania, and scored a fifth-round technical knockout, his first win of 1993. In fact, his first win in more than a year. And your card, a one-point fight. I thought it was a three-point fight for Brandon. Really? So you like him better? Um, I just had a couple of those close rounds went to Mike Johnson. I think Mike Johnson is probably surprised at the hand speed of Bramble. It's been pretty good. Uh, especially the last two rounds, Bramble's been throwing better combinations. Mike Johnson going to the body. Not a bad idea, even if it's safe in the fight. I think Bramble was trying to tell the referee Jeff Sassy that the tape is loose on Mike Johnson's blood. Which, of course, would give Bramble a chance to breathe. Although Bramble is showing no indication of being tired at this point. Boy, Bramble is landing on counter right a lot there. And he over there is a very low left of Johnson. There it is again. Yeah, boy, I mean, he keeps going in there a lot. And the epic has got there, too. Mike Johnson better bring his left hand up or he is going to be uh, whacked. There is a piece of tape loose on the left uh, glove of yeah. Mike Johnson and uh, Joe Salsi, one of the three or four people in the arena that doesn't see it. Another effective round so far by Livingstone Bramble, who very slowly is starting to take control of this fight. I say that realizing that you still have it as a one-point fight, but... Well, but the momentum has definitely shifted yeah. him, and in this round, Keith Bramble has really, really handled Mike Johnson. There's a right hand from Johnson, however, that did get there, but the question, of course, is it enough? End of round six. We'll be back. Well, here is the counter right by Bramble over the low left of Mike Johnson. I don't know that it hurt him, but Barry is getting there a lot. Last two rounds rather decidedly for Livingstone Bramble, so Mike Johnson's going to have to do something to turn things here. Numbers through six rounds, and Bramble continues, as he has from the outset, to be more effective and thus land more punches. Even though Johnson is out throwing him, he is outlanding Johnson. Mike Johnson in this round has come out throwing a lot better shots, throwing more to the body. But see, look how many are blocked by Bramble. That's why you're seeing the numbers that he do. As much profile, Bob, Kenobi, and Logan Hobson, very adept at checking out the ones that are blocked. But also, Mike Johnson, remember, said that he learned a lot more about boxing. He's setting down his punches, throwing his punches more on balance. In this round, he's not doing that. He's lunging a little bit more, even though his punches are getting there. Yeah, a little bit. And by and large, this has been a much more controlled performance by Johnson. Maybe too controlled in some ways. But look, he is throwing good, solid, straight punches. Yeah, now he is. Yeah, before he was lunging a little bit more. Everything is landing 
from Mike Johnson is strong, but I'll tell you, he is, he is throwing a lot more than Bramble. He's been more accurate here than he was in a couple of other rounds. Bramble's still looking for that counter right. And as Johnson has tendency, when he does put the jab out there, it's tendency to leave it out there a little bit, or at the very least, drop it a little bit. Yeah, there it is again. There's the right hand by Bramble. Bramble's been much more economical with his punches in this round. That's a much better effort for Johnson in this round. You know, the percentage of the punches landed by Mike Johnson isn't going to be great in this round. He's thrown so many that he's bound to be landing more than Bramble. And Bramble going left, you know, let's see what impact that has on Johnson. He's right there for that right hook when Bramble goes southpaw. There it is. Boy, oh boy, you can get that in easier. And you know what? If the guy land, drops his left, you're, you're closer with your right hand as a lefty. I'm surprised he went back to righty that we worked him so well. Even so, Johnson, I believe, doing a bit more in the seventh round. Oh, yeah, he, I think he's definitely winning this. And I don't know if Bramble can afford to be giving a round away like this. And it, it looks like he's kind of taking the round off. In round seven, and we'll be back with more from Bushkill, Pennsylvania, after this. Example again of Johnson lowering his left hand, and there's the right from Bramble this time as a softball. In a round, however, in which Mike Johnson did do quite well. We come to round eight, that's going to be interesting to see if, in fact, he was going Bramble did just take the seventh round off, or if he's going to lose the reason for the tank. And you look at the numbers in the seventh round, and you can see exactly what we've been yammering about, although Bramble still landed very close to the same amount of punches, and they're going to say that that is a knockout, knockout round. A right hand, counter right hand from Bramble. The punch he's been landing in that one night, Mike Johnson off balance. I don't know if it hurt him a lot, but it did, the punch did not come down. I don't think it did hurt. In fact, I think it's been hurt more by other punches. There's a good shot, though. Oh, good body work by Bramble, too. Now Mike Johnson must become a slugger in a way, just to survive in this round and to see if he can get back into this. But of course, it's dangerous to do that. And boy, he's going to get into that right hand some more. His left is very low, as he just did. And Johnson in trouble and Bramble, the better, and he'll land out of the corner. Again, the counter right by Bramble, and this one is. I think Johnson's hurt more now than he was when he was knocked down. Bramble's mixing his attack very well, working both the body and the head. He's a nice uppercut. Right hand. Finally, Johnson gets off the ropes. And it's ironic, isn't it, that the 27 year old, not the 33 year old, has been more tired in the last several rounds. On the, on the inside, Bramble's a good defensive fighter and he works well in there. Good right hand again, and a left hand forces Johnson back into the ropes, and Bramble right on top of his man. Good uppercut by Johnson, but Bramble turning stop when able to land that right foot over the left of Johnson even better. And then Big round, straight right hand, that hurt Johnson. Another right hand forces him into the ropes. And Bramble is so confused for switching back and forth now from righty to lefty. Really excellent strategy by Bramble this round. Johnson, give him credit, he's shown a lot of toughness hanging in there. None of those got there. Good defense by Bramble. Nice combinations by Johnson. You know what's ironic? Johnson's technique is better in this fight than I've seen him in the past, and yet it's still not getting the job done for him. Good right hand again by Bramble, again Johnson in the corner, and again Johnson in trouble. Well, Bramble's in shape, huh? Excellent round by Livingstone Bramble. Excellent round. Work both sides of the man. 
You have to have what I'm telling you, son. Good advice from Keith Lee. But when you stand in front of Bramble, you get whacked with the right hand. That one, the right hand to the temple did knock him down. And uh, as Johnson did stay in front of him, see no movements from side to side, which is what Keith Lee wants. He's getting cracked with those rights. It's about half push, half punch, but yeah, but later, a bit of a knockdown. Later, he heard it more. Here's Bramble with a good straight right hand. Again, why did he land that? Because Johnson was right there. So we'll see if Johnson could heed the advice of Keith Lee, which was certainly the right thing. Numbers in the eighth round, and you can see what Bramble did, plus the knockdown. And ironically, here's Johnson landing 40% and uh, getting 28 punches, and, and still wasn't enough for that round, of course. This is a little bit of the old of East Stone Bramble that we're seeing tonight. It really is. You know, I'm not going to suggest that his skills are at the level they were five, six no, no. years ago. But, and neither are you, but um, speaking on your behalf, of course, which I appreciate. <laughs> but he has shown better skills. And there is my scorecard. You probably have Bramble ahead by more. One more point. I yeah. 78, 73. Um, you know, he's looked a lot better than when we saw him against Mayweather, Tyson, or against Ricky Myers. Uh, I mean, this is a better performance. And I think it's conditioning, Barry. I think he's worked harder for this fight. Johnson now, a frustrated fighter, he knows that he pretty much has to get Bramble out of there. The problem is that Bramble also knows that. the last to ride. Didn't hurt himself for that end so far. Well, if he continues on along these lines and would win this fight, he would make himself a guy that could get into another interesting fight. I don't know if he could ever get a title shot, but make for an interesting bout. Because Mike Johnson is no push up He's a pretty decent young fighter who has re restructured his career, reinvented himself a little bit, but he's having trouble with Bramble. has not lost a fight since being handled by Keith Lee about a year and a half ago. And again, the thing that they probably won't like is he's right in front of Bramble instead of stepping off to the left or the right and working him at angles. And they want him more on the inside. And every now and then you start to wonder why they call this the sweet science. And when you see a fight like this, you can start to understand. Yes. There, there's a lot of subtleties at work here. There are some. Uh, it's not just the stronger guy that knows win. And I'll tell you what, the experience of this stone Bramble has really helped him in this bout. He switched back and forth a lot. He's, he's known what to get inside and get outside. Although Johnson has had a pretty good round nine. But he's got a long way to come back. One round to go. We'll be back. For over 20 years. Mike Johnson might have a, a chance of still winning this fight by decision. He might need a knockdown to do it. Yeah, the early rounds were close enough that you can make a case for this, this fight being very across the board on, on judges' cards here. Johnson now, this is a very important round of boxing for him because to lose to Bramble at this point could be damaged for him because a lot of people view Livingstone Bramble as damaged goods. And even though he's performed better, it would tarnish Mike Johnson's young reputation to be sure. Bramble clearly in better shape than he has. Oh, him. infinitely better. And here he is in the 10th round. Oh, he got to a big left hook by Johnson. It did. That wobbled him a little bit. That's a slip. Johnson's not having a bad 10th round, as he didn't have a bad 9th round, even though it was pretty close. He's tagging Bramble pretty good in this 10th round. But Bramble just hit him with a right hand. Bramble not getting back to throwing that kind of right hand. There it is again. And again. And Bramble got clearly the better of that exchange. Now right hand by Johnson. 
fight and the condition of the whole thing. It's not the 20, 20,000 rounds of boxing that's doing it. It's the condition that you're made at the older age because it's so much harder to lose the weight. And the additional weight is helping me a lot with the stamina. Okay. You, you switched to lefty a number of times during this fight. It's a good trick that you used and it really confused him. Well, I worked in it in training with my, my trainers and we weren't. But first of all, I want to, I want to congratulate a member of my family, Lavaron Brambo, that just gave our first 20 in all family history. Congratulations, baby. It was, it was my gift for me, too. <laughs> and hi, mom. Hi, kids. You know how I always hey, Speaking so. of family, what, you proud of your dad? Definitely. Terrific performance, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. Do you know he's going to win? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. I was like, you know he knew it. Hey, are you, uh, what's next for you? Right now, I'm going to um, wait for the winner out of um, Kevin Pompey and Harold Brazier. Wow. And I think that will be my next fight. Uh, like I said, staying in the game, only these big fights are going to keep me in the game. And definitely, I want the winner of the next week fight between Kevin Pompey and uh, Harold Brazier. And I'll be training from tomorrow. Well, those two guys put out a great fight once before on ESPN, and they're going to have another one. I'm sure they're watching now, and uh, it would make a great match against you. Well, I saw the fight they had, and it was a terrific fight for two guys that's, uh, that's uh, not agent fighters but quality pro they put on a, a terrific performance the first time they fight and I know they're probably going to do the same the next time around alright congratulations to you good win thank you and a happy new year to all my fans <laughs> ok Livingstone Bramble with a good one speaking